Back by popular demand, we are the SkyCast on the Big Sky Conference YouTube channel, giving you the insight and everything that's happening in the Big Sky Conference. I'm John Oglesby, and I really don't even remember you two. Jason Ashcraft. Yeah. And Brad Wall. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Been a while. Been a while <laughs> since we've had a show. Uh, been traveling out on the road for some fall Big Sky Championships. Jason and I were gone to soccer one week. Jason and Brad were gone at uh, volleyball another week. I've been out on football travels, but it's good to be back at the conference headquarters in Ogden, Utah to tape this episode, or this week's episode of the SkyCast. There's been a lot going on in the Big Sky. We've crowned a lot of champions, had some really exciting moments. We're in the playoffs for football right now, but we want to turn our attention to volleyball where tonight, 5 o'clock, we got a big time match taking place in Southern California. Yeah, so we got uh, Northern Arizona. First off, congratulations to them. Um, they did a great job hosting the tournament. Um, it just kind of ran the table. It didn't drop a set. I mean, the championship was, it was, it could have gone either way, honestly, but they battled with Idaho State. Got, or now they're back in the tournament the first time since 1999. So party like it's 1999 and flags <laughs> that. But, uh, so they drew uh, San Diego in the tournament. They'll take them on tonight, like you said, 5 o'clock. Uh, it'll be streamed on USC's uh, Pac-12 stream online. So definitely go check that out. Link is on our website. Link yep. will be on our I'm website, the on guide. the viewing guide. Yep. Um, really, really enticing match. You got San Diego's been ranked this year, this year um, like six different weeks. Uh, NAU's just kind of steadily been climbing up the RPI rankings, been taking down some good teams. Some good teams in the Big Sky, especially. Kind of, kind of be interesting to see. San Diego's ranked thirtieth in the RPI, and NAU's thirty third. Um, and I kind of, I did a graphic the other day, kind of comparing the statistics. It's really a toss up. Um, San Diego's got the tourney, tournament experience. This is only NAU's second tournament game. Uh, it'd be interesting to see. But you got, you got uh, Janae Vanderplug, Peyton Bach. Jensen Barton set running the offense, Lauren Jacobson, um, all, all all conference members, all named to the tournament team, yep. mm -hmm. uh, playing really good volleyball right now. And, and they set they set a Big Sky tournament record for hitting percentage. So you know their their spirits are high going into this oh, tournament. Absolutely. So I mean I like their chances. We'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, if if they win. They, there's a chance they can take on USC um, with the number one overall really seed, good. number ranked yeah. number two in the country. It'd be a tough draw there, but to get a win would be a huge step for this program. They've had a phenomenal season, um, and it's just been great to see them. It helps too that continuing. it helps too that their first game's technically at a neutral site. Um, sure, it's a shorter trip for San Diego fans to. Southern Cal than it is for NAU yeah. fans, but it is a neutral court. Yep. That isn't something that we we typically get with the Big Sky Conference. Yeah. A lot of times you have to go mm -hmm. to, uh, I think Northern Colorado had to go to uh, Colorado State mm -hmm. last year and play Colorado State. So the fact that you get that first game on a neutral court is, is super helpful. Well, I think it's too, you know, you talk about getting a win. This is a very winnable match for Northern mm -hmm. Arizona. Any time that the conference can pick up wins in postseason tournaments, that only helps to raise the luster of not just Northern Arizona, but the entire league. Yeah. And again, a very this, winnable match. And today. this is the squad to do it. You know, yeah. they're on a 17 match winning streak. They've been playing. You know, their last loss came in September. They're just playing really good volleyball yeah. right now. And Coach Ken Murphy's got them, got them doing pretty impressive stuff. Yeah, absolutely. That match again will be streamed live this afternoon. You can find the link to the Pac-12's streaming site on the weekend viewing guide. All right, let's turn our attention to the gridiron. Uh, last weekend, the first round of the Big Sky or of the Division One football championship playoffs. Real quick, uh, before we get into what happened last week, I want to give a shout out to some of our individual award winners for the All Conference in the Big Sky. Our offensive MVP in the Big Sky Conference, big shocker here, <laughs> Cooper Cup. I, of Eastern I, Washington. I was very surprised yeah, I think, that he got that. I think we all were. It was a little outrage. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was definitely, a, you know, a Cooper, what a tremendous season he's had. We're taping Thursday afternoon. He just got named to the first team academic All-American mm -hmm. list as well. So congratulations to him. He's a finalist for the Stats FCS Offensive Player of the Year. That'll be named at Dallas 
the week in the national championship game. James Kowser of Southern Utah, the defensive player of the year of the Big Sky Conference. Of course, he shattered the national sacks and tackles for loss records, broke the records in the league that were held by Jared Allen, and he's turned out to be okay. Another really um, shocking yeah, yeah, yeah. turn of events there. Yeah, uh, James Kowser, tight contention with Tyrone Holmes in yeah. Montana. It's interesting, Holmes, Kowser, and then Portland State safety Patrick Amosar, they're all finalists for the Stats FCS Defensive Player of the Year. I'll make a bold guarantee. The Big Sky Conference has the three finalists for the award. I'm going to guarantee <laughs> that we are going to win that FCS Defensive Player of the Year award. And I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I think it's a good move for the conference. People nationally kind of look at us as, oh, we like to chuck the ball, West Coast mm -hmm. offense style. But we play defense in this conference, and I think this is a good statement to starting that trend and that narrative nationally. So you, you have a player from Montana, yep. Southern Utah, Portland State. Yep. Which three teams were in the FCS playoff for that would be uh, <laughs> Southern Utah, Portland State, yeah. Montana. It yep. just goes to show defense wins championships, especially in the case of Southern Utah. Congrats to them. But uh, like you said, it goes a long way to helping the defensive uh, prowess of the conference. But, you know, it, it, those guys really help their teams go a long Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Some of the other individual award winners, unanimous selections. We had a co-freshman of the year come out of the big sky. Case Cook is the quarterback at Northern Arizona. He's a contender as well for the National Freshman of the Year Award. And then John Santiago, who also was named to that watch list. They are the Freshman of the Year in the Big Sky Conference. North Dakota getting snubbed out of the playoffs at 7-4. and four. But Santiago, you got to feel good if you're a UND fan. Yeah. Fighting Hawks going forward. They got a good shot with Santiago in the backfield. Absolutely. Finally, our Newcomer of the Year is Alex Caressa coming out of Snow College in Utah, transferring up to Portland State. He leads the Vikings to a sixth seed in the FCS playoffs. They'll face Northern Iowa this weekend. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But he's the newcomer of the year in the Big Sky Conference. And then hashtag Barney Ball is the head coach of the year in the Big Sky Conference. Nine and two, turn this program completely around. Yeah. The expectations are completely different. We'll talk about that coming up a little bit later in the show. But... You can't say enough about what Bruce Barnum has done for the Portland State program, and he's the coach of the year of the Big Sky Conference and a contender nationally for that award as well. Let's get into what happened last weekend in Big Sky football. Sam Houston State hosting Southern Utah. Southern Utah, congratulations to them. Their first outright Big Sky football championship. They went on the road down to Huntsville, Texas. I was there. The T-Birds come up shy, 42-39. I know there's a lot of talk amongst fans, and we've seen it. We appreciate all your comments uh, on Facebook and Twitter and our interactions. We hope you keep using those. There's a lot of talk about plays at the end of the game or things that may have happened. I don't want to talk about that as much, but I want to talk about Southern Utah as a team. They were down 16-6 to yeah. at one point. They come back, take a double-digit lead, just kind of ran out of gas at the end. But... What an impressive performance for Southern Utah. And hopefully this is the start of them doing things for a long time in this league. Yeah, and, and we've, we talked about it all season long, especially with Portland State and Southern Utah. Neither of those teams were picked to finish no, very high no. in the conference. And to see where they've come in just a short turnaround is really impressive. Uh, the defense played by the T-Birds all year long has been very Incredible. impressive. Yep. And they, they did it with class. You know, they, they played well all year. They played football the right way mm -hmm. and it, it's unfortunate that things ended the way they did um, at, at Sam Houston State but you can't take away from a marvelous season for that. No, no, yeah. Sam absolutely. Houston State, they've, they've kind of been a team that's had the Big Sky's number yeah, as of late. Yeah. It's, it's getting frustrating almost at this point <laughs> but hopefully hopefully in the future we'll, we'll get over the hump against them. They, yeah. just, they just know how to bring it against We'll them. get another shot at the Bearcats, I'll tell you that much. Um, our other game this weekend, Montana, a winner at home, 24-17 over South Dakota State. The Grizzlies fight off the Jackrabbits. They advance to face North Dakota State. We'll preview that game coming up a little bit later in the show. Uh, it was an exciting game, that's for sure. Montana jumped out to a big lead. They had a 24-0 lead at halftime. But then South Dakota State claws back, and the Grizzlies had to pick up two critical first downs late in that game. But they get the win, and the first playoff win of the Stitt Happens era happened up in Missoula last Saturday. <laughs> Great job by them. Uh, you know, South Dakota State, good program, came into uh, Washington Grizz Stadium 
looking to play well and he yeah. got to win. That is a tough place to win. And they, yeah, oh yeah. they almost did it. Good on the Grizz to hold off and move on. South Dakota, South Dakota State, they have a pretty good offense, too, to hold Absolutely. them to 17 points and shut them out in the first mm -hmm. half. Very impressive. Well, the again, that shows, I think, Montana's defense, the strength that they have, and it'll be interesting to see how that goes down the pipe this weekend. We're going to take a quick break real quick. When we come back, we're going to preview what's happened in men's and women's basketball and then what's coming up in men's and women's basketball. We'll also preview what's coming up in football. Do that in just a moment. You're watching the SkyCast on the Big Sky Conference YouTube channel. Welcome back, everybody, inside the SkyCast. You heard what happened last weekend in Big Sky Volleyball as well as Big Sky Football, and also got a preview of what's coming up. We'll talk about that a little bit more in the show, especially with football. What we want to do right now, because we're in that, again, we talked about it in our last episode, which was, I think, about three years ago. But um, we talked about kind of the crossover season we're at now. We're all experiencing that. Women's basketball is going on. Men's basketball is going on. you got an indoor track and field that's starting to fire up. Uh, I want to start with women's basketball and kind of preview to where we're at at this point in the season. So taking a look at the standings, Idaho is at 6-1. and one. The Vandals, congratulations out to Coach John Newley and his program. They're receiving votes in not just the mid-major poll, which is an accomplishment, yeah. no doubt, but they're receiving votes in the AP and the coaches' polls. Right now, Idaho last weekend, they played in a tournament down in Mexico, the Cancun Challenge. Lost narrowly to Duke. Duke's one of the top 15 teams in the country. They Duke's lost by okay. six. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're like okay. A decent program. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so they lose by six to Duke, but then they come back. They beat Texas State and they beat Iowa State. Mm -hmm. Some good marquee wins for them already. They're six and one on the season, and that Duke loss isn't exactly a bad loss. No, and it's it is a little surprising because they lost uh, Stacy Bear yeah. from last year who was most of their offense to come out and have such a good season. Good on the Vandals. It's very impressive. Well, Geraldine McCorkle, she's a sophomore forward from Australia. She's really picked up that load. She's this week's Big Sky Women's Basketball Player of the Week. Averaged over 20 a weekend to go when they get picked up some good wins over some Big West and WAC teams. Comes back, averages over 20 again in that Cancun Challenge. They pick up another win last night um, over an NAIA school. But Idaho really playing well right now. Some other teams, Montana State started hot. The Bobcats trying to regain some of that momentum. And a surprise story coming out of the Big Sky, Weber State, which has had its struggles some of the last few seasons. The Wildcats currently sit at 4-1. and one. They play in a tournament in Texas this weekend. They'll take on North Texas and Stephen F. Austin. But good to see Weber State get some life back in that program, get off to a real positive start. Regina Okoye yep. is one of the best defensive players in the conference. I think she's ranked nationally in steals. Yep. I know she was last year as mm -hmm. well. Um, if they can work around her defensive effort, they're going to have a pretty good season. No doubt about that. As that's what's coming up, or that's what's happening in women's basketball. We got a few marquee games coming up this weekend. We'll hear about those in just a moment. But first, we want to look at what's happened in men's basketball. And speaking of Weber State, Jason Wildcats with a big tournament win last week. Absolutely, Wildcats went three and zero last week. Just to name off a few of the teams they beat: Drake, seventy four fifty eight, down in Estero, Florida. Uh, then they followed that up with a win over Murray State, Good. which is the one of the best teams in the OVC. So you get a win over a Missouri Valley Conference team, mm -hmm. win over an Ohio Valley Conference team. Uh, those are the kind of conferences that at this level you're probably gauging yourself against. Yeah, yeah. They, they didn't start, Weaver didn't start the season all that strong, and then they come out, win three down in Florida, um, and then picked up a win on Tuesday against Pacific Union. They're now 5-2. and two. They're tied for the top of the conference right now. Uh, but we really want to give a shout-out to Jeremy Singlin, who yeah. oh, absolutely. had an incredible week last week. Career-high 34 points with eight three-pointers in that game over Drake. His eight three-pointers, second-most threes in Weaver State history in, in a single game. He was our Big Sky uh, Player of the Week. Yeah. Singlin is is leading that offense. You've got Joel Ballenboy who leads the nation with I think seven double doubles right now. This is a, a team that's really starting to get a little bit more cohesive mm -hmm. and spread the offense around. Yeah. They are one of those teams you really need to look out for Absolutely. as the, as the big sky season gets. Singlin's kind of almost having a like Steph Curry type type year yeah. so far behind yeah. the arc too. He's yeah. in what sixty percent of his yeah. three point or something like that. He, he is very 
when you, 60 point five percent yeah there you go. <laughs> when you look at Weber State there's so much attention they're gonna get in the middle because of Joel Ball boy and then if there's shooters outside because defenses collapse on him if you got shooters outside to kick to that's a potent combination yeah and then on the, the shoes on the other foot if yep. you know somebody on the outside's hot now you got to worry about covering them so if you can get two or three guys that can give you 10 12 points a game you're in really good shape. Right? No doubt about that. Um, we also want to give a shout out to Idaho. Idaho had a big week last week, knocked off uh, Troy 69-63 down in Denton, Texas at the North Texas Tournament. Uh, they picked up a win last night um, against Cal State Bakersfield. Idaho also up to 5-3 uh, and three in the standings right now too. A little slower start to the season for the Vandals, but they've really stepped it up lately. No doubt about that. Randy Ray and Don Berlin yeah. making it happen at Weaver State <laughs> and at Idaho. Okay, let's take a look at uh, some of the big games coming up this weekend in Big Sky women's and men's basketball. As again, the season-long road to Reno continues this weekend. A couple of marquee games. I'm interested to see tonight Eastern Washington. The Eagles got out to a quick 3-0 start. Had a few struggles since then. Played in a really tough tournament over Thanksgiving down south, but they host Utah Valley tonight. Again, Utah Valley out of the WAC. It's a good gauging game, definitely to see if you can pick up a win over a WAC team. Few other games have mentioned. Southern Utah at USC. That'll take place tomorrow night. Be interesting to see SUU picking up their first win earlier this week over Cal State Northridge. Can they keep some of the momentum going against a program that's been very good traditionally in Division I women's basketball? Uh, Weber State, we mentioned they played North Texas as well as Stephen F. Austin this weekend. I'm interested to see how the Wildcats continue to do. And then Wyoming is at Idaho on Saturday. And where Idaho's at right now to continue to build on that resume and pick up another win over a Mountain West program, the Vandals just appear to be trending upwards. And I think it's a big game for them this weekend. It's going to be really interesting to see where they are once the conference season yeah. starts. If, if they're trending upward, just looking at the women's basketball stats and standings right now, Idaho might might be the favorite looking at it, Yeah. but there is a lot of talent still in the big sky. So it, it's going to be really interesting to see where they are once January rolls around and we get in the conference. Well, it's like almost every other big sky race. You know, we have our preseason polls. It's kind of like football because yeah. North Dakota, which was picked near the top of the league, they've had kind of a slow start. Weber State, Idaho. Weber State was picked towards the bottom of the league. Idaho was kind of mid lane, yeah. but they've had some of the best starts of the entire season. And again, the big sky, regardless of the sport, you can turn the preseason yeah. polls almost on their heads. <laughs> they're, they're, they're nice to have. Yeah, so they're fun. <laughs> some other highlights I like on this schedule, like seeing teams play some top basketball programs yeah. like Villanova, Sacramento State, Montana State, Gonzaga. I really like those matchups where you really challenge yourself. I think it pays dividends down the stretch. Yeah. You you take on a really strong program. If you can keep in the running with them for a little bit, that, that's a that's a big step forward. Yeah, it'll be a be a family affair in that Montana State Gonzaga game. You got yeah, Lindsey yeah. and John Stockton with Montana State playing against uh, Lindsey's sister and John's daughter, obviously. Uh, Laura Stockton with yeah. Gonzaga, so it'll be a family some, affair some ties there. there yeah, yeah. Some, you know, it'll be an interesting game for them for sure coming up this weekend at Big Sky Women's Basketball. Again, stay tuned with us at Big Sky WBB is uh, the official Twitter account for Big Sky Women's Basketball. We update scores there every night and then do stats online every morning. So make sure to stay in tune with that as the road to Reno for Big Sky Women's Basketball continues. Now let's look at what the men's side has coming up and they got a big marquee game coming up this weekend in Salt Lake City. Absolutely I'll get to that in just a second. Uh, Southern Utah tips things off tonight against Laverne down in Cedar City. Okay. Southern Utah is, is looking to get back on the winning side of things. This is a team that can shoot. Yeah. If you like to see guys hit three-pointers if the T-Birds get hot watch out. They played really well down at, at uh, the University of Utah. Kept the, the Utes close for most of the game. If they get hot, they are, they're a really dangerous team. They're still looking for that first win. Um, Friday, San Francisco travels to Montana. Montana looking to back, get back on the winning side of things. Uh, they've kind of kind of stumbled recently. San Francisco is a team that um, we've already, uh, Big Sky team has already played Eastern Washington, defeated them on Tuesday. Uh, and then Saturday, as you mentioned, Weber State faces BYU down at Vivint Smart Home Arena. Home of the Utah Jazz. Home of the Utah Jazz. Um, 
fans in the area are familiar with it. That game's going to be on BYU TV and then also on BYUtv.org for those of you who want to watch it. So nationally televised, if you get BYU TV. We, I watched BYU last night. They played Utah. And Randy Ray talked about that this week at a, a coach's luncheon. BYU is the fastest team in mm -hmm. the country in terms of how quickly they get a playoff, get a shot off. Um, shot clock's down to 30 seconds this year on the men's side. BYU doesn't use nearly that much time. No, no. And Weber State, what, what I've noticed last night against the Utes is Jakob Pertl for the Utes, the, the big man from Austria, he was key in that game. If Joel Ballenboy can have a strong game, look out. Weber State might be able to knock off an in-state rival here. be a big non-conference win that for the Wildcats. That would be a huge non-conference win for Weber State. Um, Idaho looking to keep the winning streak going against Arkansas. Little Rock on Saturday. Here's a here's an interesting game for me. Um, North Dakota is going to Bradley on Saturday. Bradley, another strong team out of the Missouri Valley Conference. North Dakota looking to get on the winning side of things. I like I, that Bradley name, by the way. Yeah, it's a good yeah, choice yeah, of school name. Good, good choice of school <laughs> name. Um, heading to, uh, to, to Bradley, it's going to be a tough test for the Fighting Hawks. But I think, I think we haven't seen the real North Dakota team yet, from what I've seen of them. I, I think they just haven't gelled quite yet, and, but they have the talent there. Um, and then on Sunday, look for uh, Portland State at Washington State. Winnable game. a bell, by the way. Yeah. Portland State, Washington State. Yeah. So, uh, Another sport or something? Yeah, or something yeah. Transpired yeah. There. So, uh, a pregame speech from yeah, exactly. uh, Bruce Barnum. Yeah, it's, it's a friendly place for the Vikings, yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Um, Portland State has the most newcomers of any team in the country. So it, it's hard to kind of figure out what they have right now. Mm -hmm. um, it's a winnable game for the Vikings, yep. I think. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch. And then speaking of USC, uh, on Monday, Idaho travels to USC, 7 p.m. tip down in Los Angeles on the Pac-12 network. So a lot of great basketball out there. Uh, visit Big Sky MBB, official Twitter account. Uh, we will be updating stats and scores and all that fun stuff for you. Yep, as uh, again, the Road Arena, fellas, we're under three months away, coming up on three, yeah, three four months me. away. Yeah, it's going <laughs> to be a good time at Reno. Remember, go to RoadToReno.com for all the information on tickets and hotel accommodations. They are available right now. Okay, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll preview what's going on in our final segment in Big Sky Football as the second round of the playoffs kicks off on Saturday. We'll tell you who's playing who, where you can watch it, and who's going to win. We'll talk about that when we come up. Final segment of the Skycast coming up right after these messages. A new era has come to Big Sky Conference basketball. 24 teams will invade the Reno Event Center on March 7th. Make plans to join us in Reno where you'll be the witness to all the basketball madness you can handle. Tickets are on sale now. Visit www.roadtoreno.com to get all the details on how you can join your team on the road to Reno. Welcome back, everybody. It's the final segment of the SkyCast for this week as we come to you live from Ogden. Well, not live, but whatever we are. <laughs> um, live to tape. Live, live, to, live to tape. Yes. Yeah, that's right. On the Big Sky Conference YouTube channel, I'm John Oglesby, Jason Ashcraft, Brad Wall. That's an outdated phrase. If there live to tape. Live you, remember, to tape. you remember that? And that used to be like a thing. Yeah. Man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so, welcome back into the SkyCast. Uh, we're, this final segment is going to deal exclusively with Big Sky Conference football. This weekend, it's the Big Sky versus the Missouri Valley. Let's yeah. pretty much just call it what it is. It's the Big Sky versus the Missouri Valley. Montana traveling to North Dakota State, four-time defending national champions, the Grizz, who beat NDSU 38-35 to start the season. They will head to Fargo to take on the Bison once again in the Fargo Dome. That game will be broadcast, I want to get the time right here, 1.30 Mountain Time. That will be available on ESPN3. Again, go to our viewing guide. You'll be able to find that. But, fellas, there's so many storylines in this game. You've got everything. You've got you know, Derek Crittenden and NDSU quarterback Carson Wentz, who's out, but, you know, those two were both academic All-Americans, and you got, you know, that storyline. You got Tyrone Holmes and his national award status. 
that's a storyline. Obviously, you have the opening season game as a storyline. Brent Musburger and Jesse Palmer won't call this game, but it'll still be on ESPN3. There's so much in this game to kind of ingest. It's almost too much. This is it's probably one of the toughest places to play on the road yeah. in FCS football. Yeah. Um, the Fargo Dome, it, it's loud, it's raucous. Four-time defending national champion. The Bison have a lot to play for. The good thing for Montana, they know they can beat them. Yep. They've done it before, and they came back to do it. Yeah. So um, this this is a really exciting game. You know, get ESPN three, put it on your phone, put it on your yeah. your iPad, carry it around with you. You don't you don't have to be tied to the TV. Just make sure that you are watching this game because this could be one of the better games in the entire play. Well, and one of the fun things to bring up, too, as far as they know they can beat NDSU, but the Grizzlies also know they can play well in the Fargo Dome. Last yeah. year they went there. They didn't win, but it was a 22-10 to 10 game that was probably one of the toughest games of all last season mm -hmm. for North Dakota State. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. As again, that's a 1.30 Mountain Time kickoff on ESPN3. Go to Big Sky Conf that night uh, to get involved and also – Go to at Big Sky FB on Twitter. Use the hashtag UM versus NDSU to get in on the conversation. Let's keep it fair. Let's keep it clean. <laughs> I think but let's represent the Big Sky. Yeah. Interesting thing about this matchup. You ask somebody in passing, hey, who's got the advantage in this game? They both beat each other four times. Yeah. The, the, the series is tied 4-4, so this is a... It's this is as big a moment as any to, it go, is. to get it, that fifth it is. win over the, over the other program. And I think for Montana, this is a chance. Every, every playoff game is a big game, but I think this is a big game for Montana. Mm -hmm. I think this is the type of game, if they were to win it, that would really kind of announce them once again as, as a program. And I think it would help Bob Stitt really cement where he's taking the Grizzlies. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a great game. We don't predict winners on this show, but... But in this, we do have a rooting interest, obviously. Go so Grizz. Go Grizz on that. Okay. Uh, the other game coming up this weekend, I'll be actually be at this game. I'm excited for that. Portland State and Northern Iowa as the Panthers head on in to Providence Park to face off against the Vikings. As Bruce Barnum called it, it's going to be Barnum and Bailey as uh, Andrew Bailey's the quarterback for Northern <laughs> Iowa. And, uh, of course, Bruce Barnum, that goes without Way saying. Way go, Coach. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> as Bruce Barnum let the media know, weather for this game is expected to be inclement. There is a chance of some freezing rain. Temperature is going to be in the low to mid-40s at kickoff and expected to nosedive from there. So it be interesting to see what happens. Is again, you've got Northern Iowa, which is a dome team, mm -hmm going on the road, outdoors in the playoffs, in the cold. We'll have to see what happens as far as that. Portland State, we talked about it earlier, but 92, they got a bye week last week. I think that was critical for this team. They did have some lingering injuries that kind of flared up, uh, specifically on the line of scrimmage. You get those guys a week off. They were able to go home for Thanksgiving, which I always think is a good refresher. Yeah. For and players, you in, coaches. You, you throw in all the accolades. Oh, absolutely. Got coach of the year. you got a defensive player of the year finalist. Well, you know, a chunk of all first team all conference. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're, they're running high in they, Portland. They right? absolutely are running high in Portland. And the question for this game is going to be can Alex Caressa continue to keep making plays? Mm -hmm. Can he keep making plays? Because he's made so many. I, I was at the game a few weeks ago when Portland State hosted Southern Utah. James Kowser, we've already talked about James and what he does. Several times I thought he was going to pancake Alex Caressa, but Alex Caressa. Almost reminiscent, you know, of a great scrambling quarterback of the NFL. There's so many you can insert name here, but dip to shoulder, kind of duck and dive, rolls out on a bootleg, throws a pass, and it's suddenly a 20-yard completion when it looked like it was going to be a, at the very least a 10-yard sack, if not a sack fumble. What this team continues to do, and the reputation they've built nationally. I mean, this Portland State isn't just a story in the big sky. There's national writers that have written stuff about Portland State. They're a regional story in the Pacific Northwest. There's people rooting for that program. It, it, it's something that's, as somebody who works for the Big Sky Conference office, it's a lot of fun to be a part of. And, you know, there, obviously there's a lot of alums in that region, not yeah. just in Portland, but all through up the whole Cascadia area. Mm -hmm. To know that your alma mater 
is back. Yeah. It is such a good feeling. Having having been on I didn't go to a big sky school, but having had that happen in, to my alma mater yeah. was was a huge deal. And and back home you see people that you never really saw like showing up to football games and stuff and, and the talk around town is there. That what Portland State has done this year on, on the gridiron, it's established it's kind of reestablished that that community feeling with Portland yeah. State. Hopefully there are 21,000 people there at Providence Park this weekend. But the fact that the, the word is out, hey, the Vikings are good. It's and now good you're just, show. yeah, you're starting to get alumni out there putting on the green, you yeah. know, and, and, and showing a little bit more pride in, in Portland State. It, it's, it's, a, it's a feel good story that hopefully continues on and we're, we're rooting for them. But it, it's a great story from from Coach Barnum being interim yeah. to, to being a, a permanent head coach to getting Coach of the Year in the Big Sky to the success on the field, the, the community outreach that they do. Um, you were talking about that in the office the other day, some of the stuff Barnum does with fans. Yeah. Um, it, it's just one of the best stories in all of college football this year, and we're rooting for him because I don't want it to end. No, so. no, absolutely. And we do want to let fans know if you're interested in buying tickets to that game, go to GoVikes.com. Tons of great ticket information. Seats for students at Portland State, very inexpensive. Once again, go to GoVikes.com for information on where to get tickets because we do. We want to see a big crowd out of Providence Park on Saturday, give the Vikes some home field advantage. It's a great place to watch college football. There's a I will roof say. over most of the stands. You, you, the fans don't have to worry about the weather. No, so yeah, just you're <laughs> under a roof. You're yeah, you, you'll, you'll be good. <laughs> so, uh, but Northern Iowa again, they've they've had some memorable run-ins with some Big Sky programs in the playoffs. Be interesting to see what happens. They're two and zero against the Big Sky this season. They beat Eastern Washington and beat Cal Poly. So I guess we'll have to see what happens this weekend. All right, that is pretty much going to be the end of the show. Again, BigSkyConf.com. At Big Sky Conf, at Big Sky MBB, at Big Sky WBB, at Big Sky FB. <laughs> and did I miss at one? At Big Sky VB. Oh, of course. Or just Big Sky Conf. <laughs> or just, what, just pick one. Yes, yeah, <laughs> pick one out of the hat. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be back on. We're, we're excited that the, the show was back by popular request. <laughs> and uh, we're excited to continue to bring the Skycast throughout the rest of the season. Thanks so much, everybody, for watching. I'm John Oglesby. Jason Ashcraft. Brad Wall. We'll see you next week. Go Jacks. Go Vikes. Go Grizz. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of hoping Casper walk in right at the very end.